Hey, what's going on guys? Rudelanel here, coming back at you with some more Python tutorials. Uh, let's get started. I'm gonna open up Unity and get idle started. Drag it right on over so you guys can see it. And uh, we'll create a new program here. Save this as file.python. Like in USR bin environment python. Get a class started. Make sure you have both underscores on either end. Now we can get started. So now today we're going to be checking out strings, like we have been in the last couple of tutorials. So let's create a new string. Self.string can be equal to, uh, this is a string. This is a string, isn't it? It is, right? I suppose we don't even need that, uh, this one here. It is, right? <clears throat> Alright, so now we're going to take a look at the new function called, um, would, you would normally be able to work with it as a string, and then you would find the first occurrence of uh, a substring, or you'd be looking for something inside this string. So if we checked out, um, string find, and then we were looking for is inside our self.string, it would go through and look for it, and then, hey, it found is right there on the uh, index 2, because we have 0, 1 for h, and then we have 2 right here. It starts with that i, and then you have is. So uh, let's give it a go. If we print it out, self dot string dot find. Make sure we use our dot selector here, and then we can find is. If we run this, we get two. Now find is a special function because we can supply wherever we want to start looking. If we want to start looking at uh, at three, the index right after two, it'll find the next occurrence. In their case, five. So zero, one. 2, 3, and then it goes 4, and 5, because it found is right at that 5 position. So now if we do after 5, what if we did 6, it'll find the next one over at 21, and that's this is right here. And now we can supply an end, too. We can go from like 6 to, uh, to 20, so it won't find this next one. And then it'll return negative 1, because it didn't find it. Now, there's a similar function to this called um, uh, index, so we can start that up, self.string.index. And the thing is, if we run this and it doesn't find it, it'll return an error. So we're going to be able to work with that later on. Value error, because it doesn't find it. But we're going to be able to work with like modifying these errors and being able to uh, continue to code, or at least continue to go through the program if we happen to come across one, and that sort of thing. But that's for a whole other tutorial. So let's take a look at this, this print.find function, though. Let's see what we can do here. Let's try and create it all on our own. Let's create a new function. I'm going to call mine find. We need the self keyword, we need the string, we need to know what we're looking for, we need to know the start, and we need to know the end. So it's a whole bunch of arguments here, but we're going to be able to make up for all of them. And remember, some of these were optional. Start and end were optional. So we can do a start equals zero, and end is going to equal none. So now, if end is still equal to none, by the time we pass to it, we're going to want to make up for that. We want to know, okay, what the actual end of the string is. So end is going to equal the length of the string. And now we need to know how much we're looking for, too. So look for length can be equal to the length of what we're looking for. Because we're going to be adding on to our index just like we've done in some other loops. So uh, let's give it a go. We want to do for i in range... So we're going to be counting through these through these strings here, start and end. Get our code block started, and then we can test if the string at our current position is equal to the beginning of what we're looking for. Remember, we're going to want to index with zero, so we can get the beginning of that string. And if it is, then we can, okay, we can start to test whether this is what we actually want to look for. If the string... And then we're going to slice here. We're going to go from i, the current position, and then i plus the look for length. And if that is equal to what we're looking for, so if it finds something that we're looking for at the current position, it can return the current position. And if it doesn't find any of these, though, we're just going to want to return negative 1. Because just like the, how that find function did up there, uh, it's just going to return what it didn't find. So let's try it. Let's try our new function, 
If we just do the, if we just went with the regular one though, it goes for negative one. So if we try it with that same arguments with our function, self dot find, we can pass in the string, can pass in is because that's what we're looking for. We can go for the start. We'd say six for now. Let's do twenty, and we can keep a look at it. We get negative one and negative one. So let's set um, self dot start equal to two. Self dot Let's see, um, and, and that can be, um, 20 for now, but I don't think we'll use that. So let's pass in our self.start variable. <coughs> in our case, it will be 2, so we'll get returned 2 and 2, because it finds it at that second position. If we switch to 3, it'll find it again at 5, because that's what we're looking for. And then if we tried it again right after that, say maybe 6, we get 21, because it finds this one over here. So now if we do supply that uh, that self.end variable, though, remember we're going to have the same output as last time, because it's not going to be able to find that next one, because the end is limiting it. We have negative 1, because it can't go up until 21. It only It's only looking at this portion of the string. It ends right before that last is, at the 21st position. So there you go, guys. There is the, uh, here's the back end of the find function, or at least one way that could possibly work. As always, I, as always, anyway, I recommend you use uh, the built-in function, but here is an example or one way you could get that same job done. But, uh, thank you for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this, and I will see you in the next tutorial.